I'm going to sing one before them because I, that way when I get done, y'all can get adjusted to good singing. <laughs> Through my disappointments, strife and discontentment, I cast my every care upon the Lord. No matter what obsession, pain or deep depression, I'm standing on the solid rock. I'm standing on the rock of ages, saved from all the storm that rages, rich, but not from Satan's wages. Standing on a solid rock. And even though he's gone now, I don't feel alone now. With comfort came the Spirit of the Lord. Now with his word to guide me, from temptations hide me. I'm standing on the solid rock. I'm standing on the rock of ages, saved from all the storm that rages, rich, but not from Satan's wages, standing on the solid rock. And now I'm pressing onward, each step leads me homeward. I'm trusting in my Savior day by day. Ain't no other way to live, amen. And close is our relation, firm is its foundation. So on the solid rock I'll stay. I'm standing on the rock of ages, saved. From all the storm that rages, rich, but not from Satan's wages, I'm standing on a solid rock. Amen. 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 Bless you, girls. Amen.
chapter 2. Mom, what day we leave on? Monday morning? Okay, so Monday morning, I know there was a day. I don't remember which day. They get to running together. But Monday morning, Lord woke me up and I wrote this message. And I was pretty certain I'd be preaching in here. And I believe I was supposed to preach there tonight, but I, I got to be home. Somebody say amen. 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 I, I, I'm called to pastor this church. Amen. Unfortunately for you all. Amen. 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 But I thank God for the, for the Lord, and I thank God for His Word. Amen. And this message, as it got put on my heart, I, I, met, I butchered the title. I gave the theme, really, just before service. But I want to preach on it doesn't work being distant. It doesn't work being distant. Woke up Monday morning. I knew we had a long drive ahead of us. I'm telling the Lord, Lord, you don't be tired of... You don't help me write this message quickly, get back into bed. And ain't it amazing that we think we know what's best for us, but God actually knows what's best Amen. for us. Amen. 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 And uh, and I, I got involved in the message. And I remember hearing, I can't remember which one of my girls was going into, uh, one of the early birds uh, was going in to get a shower or something. And I remember just sitting in there. Actually, it may have been Sister Gabby. I can't remember. It was somebody... Monday morning, and then I'm thinking, man, if I don't hurry to get back to bed, I'm going to be tired. But man, God started pouring into my soul this message, and I'm going to tell you, it did something for me right there at my kitchen table. Amen? Amen. And I hope it does something for you, but you'll have to listen and understand that if we are going to pick up the mantle, if we're going to have the power, we're going to have the effectiveness then we've got to get serious about this thing of serving. Amen? Amen. And, and, and I, I will tell you with all my heart, after being in a passing the man on meeting, I can't wait to preach this message this evening. I, I'm excited about what the Lord's done. I'm excited about what He's doing, but I can't wait to see the, the, the next day. Amen? I can't wait to see the effects of when we, as a church, get our hearts right, our minds right and our direction right with the Lord, what the Lord will do. Somebody help me. Amen. And, and here in 2 Kings chapter 2, when you find verse 1, go ahead, if, you, if you're able to stand with me for the honor and read the Word of God tonight, go ahead and open up your Bibles. It'll be it'll do you who of good to have a Bible with you. If you ain't got a Bible, raise your hand, we'll get you a Bible. Not having a Bible, you came to the fight without a sword. Amen. 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 You need a Bible. Amen. You, you can't just uh, go through life without leaving the Word of God because being distant won't work. And you try to separate yourself as much as you want. That's right. Amen. From Amen. the things of God. And the more you try to separate out and the more distance you get, don't worry. You think the next sin won't come, but it right. does come. It does. And you, and you think the next problem won't come, but it does come. And as the more you get distant and farther away from God, the more powerless you're going to be. Yeah. See, I'm about to tell you about two different groups of people. There's one that ain't got the power of God on them, and there's the ones that got the power of God on them. There's a difference between the group that's walking with God and the group that has became distant from God. May I say that you might not even become distant. You may have always been distant, never got your heart right to jump in and get in where the water's warm and to find out the will of God for your life. And I'm telling you, just like my sweet wife testified, the greatest life there Amen. is is to live the Christian life. Amen. Amen. Now just because you're saved don't make you a Christian. Amen. To be Christ-like makes you a Christian. But in this very familiar text, 2 Kings 2, 1, the Bible says that it came to pass when the Lord would take up on Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elisha said unto, Elijah said unto Elisha, Terry here, I pray thee for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So he went down to Bethel. And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that thy Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yea, I know it. Hold your ye your peace. Now that's country slang for shut your mouth. That's what it is. 
And Elijah, Elijah said unto Elisha, Terry here, I pray thee for the Lord that sent me to Jericho. And he said, As the Lord liveth, as the soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. And the sons of the prophet that were at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he answered, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. <coughs> And Elijah said unto him, Terry, I pray thee here, for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth, as the soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And I want you to notice this phrase, And they too went on. And fifty men of the sons of the prophet went and stood to view afar off. And they too stood by Jordan. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters and they were divided hither and thither so that the two went over on dry ground. I want you to notice the theme. Two of them went together yep. and saw something from God Amen. while 50 stood afar off Amen. and did not see the same things they saw. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I need your help tonight. God, Lord, would you bless this message. Lord God, would you bless your messenger and help us to get sold out tonight, God, to pick up that, that proverbial mantle of the old-time religion and to go on and make our mind that we ain't going to quit. Make our mind that we're going to stay in. And we don't care if all hell comes against us. We don't care if the wind's going to blow. If the rain's going to ascend. If the waves are going to crash. Let us make up our mind tonight. That no matter what goes on in our life. We're going to keep on keeping on for the cause of Christ. In Jesus' holy and precious name I pray, amen. amen. And amen, you may be seated. And there's a distinct difference between our groups tonight. As you got 50 that have got a religious type of background, uh, they may have even had a little touch of the old time way, and those 50 are standing afar uh, off. May I tell you why there's a crowd uh, that likes to be a little farther off? They like to talk to you and I like we are some kind of super Christian uh, heretic, some kind of uh, cult type members because we don't want to be afar off. We want to be right where God's people Amen. are. We want to be right where the power of God is. We want to be right where the demonstration of God is. But let me tell you why a lot of you will never see God move mightily in your life nor demonstrate hey, the power that He would like to demonstrate in your life and even use you and for the cause of Christ is because much like me You'll never get sold out to get all the way in. You'll always just be standing afar off. Amen. Now let me tell you why a lot of people stand afar off. They don't like accountability. Amen. Amen. They don't like anybody holding that book to them and saying this is what the measure of a Christian is. See, when you stand afar off, you can blend in and look a little religious every now and then. You can blend in and look like you've been saved. You can blend in and have all the right language, have all the right actions, but still be far from where God can use you Amen. again. Amen. They don't like accountability. They like everybody to leave them alone where they're at and let them be comfortable where they're at and be comfortable in their sin and be comfortable in their decision and to be comfortable in their worldliness. Amen. I, I'm talking about when you're far off, friend. And the reason you like is because you don't want anybody to hold you accountable to the things of God. Amen. Not to the standards of God. Not to the thing that God said, if you've been bought with a price, you're a new creature. Amen. And not that if you've been bought with a price, you're supposed to walk it. Everybody talks about loving the Lord. But my Bible says, the King James Bible says, if you love Him, you'll keep His commandments and walk in all His ways. And you can't walk right being afar off. Amen. 
Don't like the accountability. The accountability. I got to think about it in my notes here. Amen. And I wrote this Monday morning. Before any storm arose, somebody help me. Amen. Amen. I got to thinking about who likes to go afar off. I got to thinking about the prodigal who had everything in the father's house. But somewhere along the line, he got far off from where the father's house was. He took all that he had. Uh, he went out and wasted it in the world. Uh, and you know, I thank God, Brother Frank, that that prodigal came home. Uh, but Jack Lutcher told me on Monday, uh, he said, Brother Hargis, uh, it's very rare, uh, it's very rare that the old prodigal ever does come back home. That's right, amen, that's right. Some of y'all got this smile said, I'm going to be afar off for as long as I can. And then when I get ready, I come back. You may never get ready. Amen. And you may never come back. You may be left Amen. afar off. You may be left out there in the hot water. Do you know how many prodigals do not come to themselves? Because God turns them over to a reprobate mind. And turns Amen. them over to their wicked sin. And turns them over to their decision to be a far off and you know what they do they get out in the world and they literally die of malnutrition that's the fact that's good that's the truth hog slop can't feed you very long it ain't got the nutrients that's what's down there in the father's house see the father's house got the bread brother the, the father's house got the fatted cow. <laughs> Amen. The father's house got all what you ever needed. But I'm going to tell you something. What Elisha did, and when he met Elijah, he hooked up with the man of God uh, because he wanted him to hold him accountable because he didn't want to just look like he was a part of the church. He didn't want to just fake like being a part of the church. Amen. He actually wanted to be a part of the church. Amen. 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 He gave him every opportunity to get a far off. He did. He said, I got to go down here. You stay here. He said, no, sir. I'm not interested in being like that crowd. I ain't interested in walking like that dead crowd over there. I ain't interested in being dead spiritually like that crowd over there. He said, no. I actually know the Lord. Amen. I actually know the Lord. He said, where you go, I'll go. Amen. 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 I said, first, they don't like the accountability. Amen. But you know what they really do like? The acceptance. Yeah. Amen. 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 Well, Straight as the gate narrows is the way. And few be there that find it. Do you know how many people is going to go headlong into hell with everybody else because they felt comfortable in the crowd? Amen. Yep. See, over there in the crowd, the crowd, the crowd will tell you you're right. Yeah, you, you're not as bad a person as they try to make you out to be. By the way, ain't nobody trying to make you out to be a bad person. If that Bible says you're a bad person, hey, it ain't us making you out to be a bad person. That's the Word of God making you out to be a bad person. And I'm telling you, they don't like it when they get, they don't want to be accountable. But what they want to be is they want to be accepted. You know, like it, don't judge me, Christ. Amen. Don't judge me. Amen. Judge ye not. You know what it says. Yeah, it says first get the beam out of your own blessed God eye and then go help your brother. And they going to be so many ride that broom, stick right into hell. And try to make up why they should have never hey, got right with, hey, if you ain't right, you ought to get right. Amen. 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 They, 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 they don't like that, that, that accountability. That's right. That's right. They, don't, they want that approval. They want that acceptance. They, they want that, 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 that type of ostracizing. Amen. I mean, they come down, they're so, they're so negative. Right. You ever notice somebody, I can tell you the real good indication. When you're far off, you're negative about the old time way. Amen. Amen. Don't you know? I mean, they're negative. Your master's going to leave here in a little bit. Right. Amen. He said, I know. Shut your mouth. Amen. 
I know he's going to leave. Nobody lives forever down here. But hey, while he's here, I'm going to stick around the man of God who knows God, who's seen God, who's felt God. I'm just going to hang out with him while he's here. Amen. They're so negative. They want to all will make you feel like you're the one off in the head. That's right. Yeah. Don't you know this old time religion is fading away? Come on. Don't you know modern things are moving in? Hey, drugs ain't that bad. Hey, drugs is bad every time drugs yeah. comes in. Yeah. A decade later, the King James goes out. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. They try to hold us. Almost to a hostage. Don't you know? You're going to be all by yourself. And you know, I bet you if you went and talked to Elisha a little later on, I bet Elisha would have told you I never was alone. Amen. Because when God took him, hey, God never left me. And God never forsook me. Amen. And as long as I got God, I'm never alone. Amen. Amen. But those that are far off, they're negative toward the old time way. They're negative toward Bible preaching. They're negative toward standards. By the way, if you don't know it, you go to an independent fundamental Bible even Baptist church. We believe women ought to dress like women. Amen. And men ought to dress like men. You say, I don't believe Amen. that. Well, I'd go find me a different church. Amen. I'd go now. I'll tell you what I'd do. I'd go down there to Devil Ran Baptist Church. Amen. And it'll take you like you are. And leave you like you are. And watch you and your family go right off into hell. Amen. Acting Amen. the way you want to act. But if you want to get right with Amen. God. And you don't want to be a far off. I'd stay where the truth's being That's preached. Right. Amen. 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 That's right. You say, I don't like that. That's too blunt. Well, I ain't going to sugarcoat it for you. Amen. I've been running too long. I ain't a far off. I got so deep in this. Everybody that sees me recognizes me as one thing. And I'm not ashamed of it. I'm an independent, fundamental, hey, Bible-believing Baptist. Hey, I've been in church since Saturday. I drove six hours to get here. Hey, they ain't nothing calming me down. They ain't nothing cooling me down. I'm staying in the old time way. Amen. Amen. You can cross dress if you want. I ain't going to endorse it. Amen. Amen. I ain't wearing my mini skirt. Somebody help me. Amen. 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 I'm not losing my identity for a crowd. Amen. I ain't losing my identity for a crowd. You either love me for who I've always been or you never loved me anyway. Amen. But they're very, they're very, they ostracize. They try to, they try to isolate, make us feel like we're the problem. They don't like the accountability. They don't like to have to have to answer for nothing. And see, when you stand afar off, you're at a safety distance. Hey, from any attacks of the devil, you're at a safety distance for any troubles of being a real Christian. Hey, I'm going to tell you, when you're far off, see, you're safe from all them things. Amen. Problem is, you're going to miss the big things. Amen. My wife said the last six months have been the hardest of her life. I agree with Brother Chris Dallas. You know, you, you would be shocked how many preachers told me the last six months, they, but just like Brother Kelly talked about how much I've been betrayed, hey, I'm going to tell you right now, the betrayers, hey, I'm talking about the devils, Hey, they'll pat you on the back one day, dust off the place, stick a knife right down in your back. That's right. And I'm talking about, listen, I'm with my wife, but I'm going to tell you she said something that they said last night that's so true. Out of every little eyedropper of bitterness I've been fed, I, I've been given a ladle full of good. Amen. Hey, God's Amen. been better to me than I deserve. I, every time it got dark, the sun showed up. I, every time it got hard, the goodness showed up. I, every time I thought it was time, I had to throw in the towel. I'm reminded by what Brother Jeff said yesterday. A hey, prize fighter can't throw in the towel because you ain't the one holding it. Hey, Amen. the prize fighters in the fight and there's one in your corner that's holding the towel and he ain't giving up on you 
and he ain't giving up on me. And as long as he's in control, we're going to win this thing. We're going to come out the final bell, the victor in all this. I ain't saying mama ain't going to have some busted nose and some busted eyes. And, and I ain't telling you it ain't going to come out and going to cost you something. But can I tell you, uh, that precious Jesus, he's worth it all. Amen. 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 Let me give you some things that you get when you're not a part of the far off crowd. Come on, brother. Because nobody in here has to be the far off. That's right. Amen. Let me tell you what you get to have, man. Now, if I get happy on this and I get to run and y'all just pray for me. Amen. Number one, you get to get some personal accounts. It's no longer Brother Hargis' stories. Amen. It's no longer D.L. Moody's stories. It's no longer them old men of God from days gone by. It ain't no longer about what they seen God do. It starts to be about what you and I see God do. Amen. Look back down in 2 Kings chapter 2. Don't, I ain't even got to my message yet. I want you to look down there in verse 13. Now you watched him. Over there in verse 8, Elijah took the man. Mm -hmm. And Elijah hit the water. And the water parted right. under the very action of Elijah. Did you not read that over Amen. there yeah. in verse 8? Yeah. But now watch here in verse 13. Elijah is now gone in a chariot. Of, he's now been taken up to heaven. Now, what's Elisha supposed to do? He's supposed to go over to the 50 sons of the prophet and say, we're going to live on his stories for a little bit. We're going to go around telling everybody about Mount Carmel for a little bit. I'm trying to help you tonight. Amen. There's a difference between those that are far off and them that chose to get real deep in. When you chose to stay by that cross, you'll start to have personal accounts and you don't have to tell everybody else a story and how good God was to them. You get to stand up, raise up your hand and say, through it all, God's been good. Amen. Amen. Oh, I thank God what he did for Elijah. But thank God, the same God of Elijah is my God today. Amen. They're over there watching from afar off and then he's gone. They're smirking and laughing. But look down there in verse 13. He took up also the man of Elijah that fell on him and he went back. And he stood by the bank of Jordan and he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and he smote the waters. Watch this. And he said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? <laughs> Woo! Right there. Amen. I felt like shouting at my toenails right there. <laughs> where is the Lord God of Elijah. I believe God knelt down from the splendors of heaven. And he said, son, I'm going to show you Amen. I ain't just the God of Elijah. I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. I ain't just their God. But Elisha, because you chose not to be afar off. Amen. And you chose to stay by the way. And you chose to walk in the way. I'm going to show you I'm not just their God. I'm your God. Amen. Woo, right there. He ain't just your God. He's my God. Amen. He's my God. And he shows up for me. Amen. Amen. Elijah stood there for about two and a half seconds. Amen. And the Bible says when he also had spit in the waters. Brother Frank, I heard Brother Tony Hudson say it like this. 
I don't believe he created anything new. That's right. I don't think he tried to get up a new move. I believe he watched you stay. I believe he watched how Elijah took that old time cloth. And I believe he watched Elijah look up. Can you hear old brother Elijah, the same one, the same one on Mount Carmel, has said, Lord God, show them who's the Lord today. He knew how to, he didn't try to come up with some fancy prayer. He just say he knew what Elijah did. Elijah didn't have some kind of cool system. He just learned, how, hey, real quick, how to get a hold of God. And I believe with all my heart, when he said, where's the Lord of Elijah? I believe Jehovah God fired in on him and he said well, if it's working like this I ain't going to try nothing new he got his foot just like Elijah got it he got his head just like Elijah had it and he swung with everything he had and just like Elijah did and guess what he found out when you stick by the old time way when you do it the old time way ain't the same old time God he he shows up in it all. Amen. Amen. And that water parted. <coughs> Here comes them little profiteers. Amen. The ones that are far now they want to join their singing group. Right. Amen. <laughs> Now they want to be your buddy. Somebody help me. They like him until he gets rough on them here in a little amen. bit. Amen. But you know what? Hey, look at me. I'll tell you the bad thing. They might run to him for some help, but you know what they don't have, Brother Wayne? They don't have a personal a account of what God can do in a man's life. Amen. Amen. They now all they got is Elisha's story. Right. They ain't got their own story. They don't have what God could have done for them. In fact, now they're, they're witnessing that there really is a tangible power that was attainable. Amen. Can I say something, y'all? Don't get mad at me. You know why some of you in the mess you are, God's not real to you. Amen. Get quiet. It's all Preach right. It. I'm milk kick you tonight. I'm, I'm so fired up. Amen. I can run toward hell with a squirt gun. Somebody Amen. help me. Amen. I'm crazy in a chip bump with a chainsaw. Amen. Somebody help me. Amen. Amen. I'm going to tell you why some of you hey, don't live for God because he ain't real to you. Amen. That's right. You've never had a touch of the power of God on your life. Right. Amen. You never saw God move in your life. Oh, hey, my kids, my kids can testify how they've seen God move in mom and daddy's life. Amen. Yeah. I bet you they could tell the story better than me on that electric bill getting paid. I bet they can tell the story of all that beef being delivered to the house. Mama, you listen to me. You and I can't back up. We can't waver. We've seen the power of God too many times in our life. Amen. Out there praying after the flood, needing Amen. food. And we watch all them bands pull up. Amen. I've been out there, Brother Tim, he stepped. Me and my wife walked up there one time. We was driving down I-75, and we passed the Winchester and, and Richmond exit. You remember that, Mama, and the tire blew out? And I walked all the way back to the to the Richmond Winchester exit, got a bat, a bottle of fix a fix a flat, walked all the way back about four, five, six, seven miles, however long it is, and walked all the way back to my car. I got back to my car and they wasn't nothing left to my wheel. I mean they wasn't even no rubber there. I'm thinking, my God, we ain't got the money to tow it. We ain't got the money to get down to the store. I stuck it, fix a flat to that time. You say, I wouldn't do that, brother Mike. That's a waste of twenty dollars. Hey, I tell tell you right now, hey, I'd rather have faith in God than the $20. I'd rather have faith in God than the possessions of secular things. I, I stuck that fix a flat in there. I cried out, said I ain't got no other option. I watched that wheel raise off the ground. We drove to the next exit. Hey, brother, I told me, brother David, hey, we got off that next exit. Hey, drove all the way back on that country road, all the way back to that other exit, pulled into the convenience to, to the gas station, got in the parking spot, and the wheel went. 
Amen. Little old truck pulled up next to me and said, Look like you're having tire problems. Oh, amen. I said, You must be a detective. Amen. <laughs> he said, Come on, we'll run you all the way back down to Berea. Find you a used tire you can buy yourself. I remember I got in that truck thinking, Man, I ain't got enough money for a used tire. But I got all the way down there and I got to that tire store and that tire store, that man said, oh, I got that tire, but the only tire I got is a new tire. All I got is that new tire with all that brand new tread on it. And I said, how much? And let me just tell you this, it's five times more than what I had. I said, buddy, you care to run me down to the next tire store? He said, don't care at all. Went out there and he said, but I got to use the bathroom. Could you go out there? This man didn't know me from Adam. I went in there and sat in that truck and I was thinking, man, I'm alone with this dude's wife and this dog that's staring me down. <laughs> and then I got to think, what am I doing in their truck? I, they're from like Virginia. I could become a 48-hour mystery. <laughs> All of a sudden he come in, he jumped in that truck, slammed that door, peeled back around and took back. I said, sir, Bria, is that way? He said, well, I'm going to head back. We're going to check on your wife and your kids. We pulled up. Amen. He grabbed that brand new tire up back in that truck. Amen. You say, oh, he was an awful nice guy. You're dead in the head. It was an awful power. For God and that showed up right when I needed him to show up and showed off the way I needed him to show up and I never will forget praising God and thanking God as that man and woman drove off for what God does I talk about friend it's a real tangible power that's attainable amen, amen. amen. when God shows up in such a presence it can't be nobody but him. Amen. Right. It can't be you and it can't be me. I say one thing about it. Them that are far off, they always will tell you about how everything they do. They'll tell you about their ministry. They'll tell you about how good they preach. They'll tell you about what type of man they are. But us that knows us stick to the hand of God. We'll never tell you how good we are. We'll never tell you how great we are. We can only say if it not be for God. If it not be for God. God, I'd be in a ditch somewhere. Amen. I said first they find there's a personal account. Then they find it's a power that's attainable. And they find out there's a great profit in serving. Amen. When Elijah met Elisha, you know where he made him at? Made him in the field. Yeah. I don't know why, but God likes <laughs> I just think they're going to be a whole army of us country preachers Amen. Over. and all these city slickers poor brother Chris Amen. Dallas bless his heart <laughs> he didn't know if he was a rooster or he <laughs> that ain't because he's transgender he just didn't know well because he'd never been on a farm Amen. <laughs> and you know he's going to watch you say, Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, Miss Miss Jenny wasn't no. She went in there that same restaurant he went in. She was trying to count feathers and figure out which one she's supposed to run into. Amen. <laughs> but he found out there's a prophet in serving. Amen. You don't think he ever got alone? I mean, my goodness, you can hear his heart when he cries out, "My father, my father." Whenever Elijah was caught up in that whirlwind. Oh, yes. yeah. Man, you could hear his heart break when he was all of a sudden standing there. But he said, I gotta press on. This is the right way. Amen. I'll never have a Mount Carmel like he did if I stand right here. Amen. I'll never see the parting of the waters if I rest my morals right here. Right. And you know where the last place we ever find Elisha? Brother Frank, he goes from the field, Brother Gary, to teaching the king how to shoot arrows. That's right. Amen. That's right. You know, everything that Elijah did, Elisha doubled. That's right. That's right. 
That's what he asked for. Amen. Everything that that the men, if it is, he said, they said, now, Elisha, how good's God? Well, I've heard some good ones, man. Amen. I've heard him, uh, hey, raise up the dead. Uh, I heard him fill up the oils and the pots. I, I heard, I mean, he got done all that. But you know, it's something when he looks at him and says, man, I didn't just get to hear about it. I went and done it all myself. Amen. And I may have started out in the field. I may have had some rough days. I may have been Amen. surrounded by some armies. I didn't really care to be fighting against. I, I've had ups and I had downs. But, but at the end of it all, guess what? I found when my end was near, I died better than I was. Amen. You know when they buried Elisha? Amen. They threw a soldier in his grave. Yeah. That man brought more back to life dead than me and you. He got to uh, life. Somebody say amen. amen. He found that it was a great profit in it. Not for himself. Went over Naaman had the leprosy and he wanted to give Elisha all that stuff. Yeah. Elisha knew that the reward that he was going to obtain one day Way was far better. greater than it, silver, amen. gold, and clothes. That's right. I can hear them maybe asking, so why didn't you take all that stuff? <coughs> God wouldn't have been mad at you. You could have built you a little nicer house, or yeah. you could have bought you a little this. I could hear him say, See, there's a land that <laughs> is fairer than day. Amen. I can see it afar. For the Father waits over the way. Because where I'm going, yeah. they pave the roads with what you're trying to take. Amen. Because where I'm going, I won't wear the garments of this world. Amen. Amen. <laughs> There'll be a day when He'll take off all these old wretched worldly garments. And he'll put me on a garment that'll never wear out. It'll never lose its shine. It'll never need to be washed or replaced. See, there's coming a day. That's right. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. He saw the prophet in the serving. Now you say, Brother Hargis, what is the difference between him and them? I'll tell you what it is. You know in this church right now there's some of you sitting in here and you're a them. And there's some of you that's in here and you're a him. You're seeing the power of God. You're seeing the provisions of God. You're seeing the blessings of God. You're walking so tight with God. Hey, man, hey, listen, you, I, I tell my wife, be careful. My wife asked God to pay our house off and he flooded it. I said, be careful what you pray. Be, be a little more specific when you talk to them. <laughs> There's some of you that you couldn't get a prayer answered. Amen. Your life's in shambles. Your life's a mess. Hey, don't bow your head yet. It ain't prayer time. Amen. You're a mess. I, I would love to say, Brother Frank, with all seriousness, that the majority is him and the minority is them. I've been doing this too long. Amen. And I ain't talking about going through troubles and trials. That don't make you like them. I'm talking about being weak, powerless. Are y'all all right? Amen. No service. No desire to serve. Amen. No profit in serving. No personal accounts. Uh -huh. No, no, no provision. No good. Mm -hmm. I'd like to say tonight that the mass in the church is like him, but the truth is there's more like them than there is like him. Amen. And you say, then what do we got to do? How I many of y'all would honest to God like to know what we got to do to be more like him than be like them? I'm going to give you three things. Come on, bro. That's good. That I believe you can find these to be so biblical you couldn't argue with me. Amen. 
Number one, jot this down. You need to be in the faith. Amen. There's lost people sitting every day in church acting saved. You ain't no more saved than right. lost. Amen. Lost. That's right. God knows. You say, how do I know whether being backslidden or lost? <laughs> is God beating the tar out of you in your backslidden state? Amen. Or has he left you in your sin <laughs> in a comfortability? Oh, that's good. Amen. 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 That's right. That's good. Can you go out here and do what's contrary to the word of God and lay your head down at night and get you a good night's sleep? Come on. Number one thing, you got to actually be in the faith. Amen. 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 You got to actually be born again. You got to actually be saved. I hear people all the time. I don't understand why I got to do that and be right with God. That ain't why well, say folk talk. Amen. Say folk say this. I don't want to do anything to be wrong with God. Amen. If you're wondering about how you can tightrope through Christianity and figure out how you can get through the maze and get violence caved, hey, I'd be worried. I'd be worried. Some of y'all getting quiet like you scared you might be lost. Amen. Amen. Bible does say examine yourselves. Know you not yourselves. Yeah. Prove yourself whether you right. be in the faith or whether you be a reprobate. Brother Frank, that's still King James Bible, ain't it? Amen. Everybody wants all the godliness without even getting hooked up with God. How many we watch powerlessly try to walk through this? They'll proclaim a preach and ain't got no preach on. Amen. Amen. And then what worries me is some people think they actually do. Amen. Amen. Come on. And anybody's got any spirituality, they're the first ones to look and say something wrong with that cat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Amen. Amen. Hey, some of you sitting in here, you're fine. And it don't matter how many preachers I bring in. I can bring them in by the droves. I can bring them in by the waves. I can bring them in. God's men. And they'll look at me and say, something wrong with that. Amen. 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 But you're all right. Amen. Everybody wants it, Sister Mary Ann. But a lot of them ain't willing to do what it takes to be where he's at. Amen. Everybody wants a big ministry. Everybody wants a name in the lights. Everybody wants everybody to accept them. Everybody wants everybody to love them. And they want all that. But you know what they don't want to do? They don't want to have to crucify that flesh and get broken before an almighty God and confess what they are. A lost, hell-bound sinner. A God resisted the proud. He give the grace and do the humble. I said the first thing you got to do is get in the I wish I'd give some help some of y'all to say you're saved. Y'all looking scared dead like you just got lost along the way. This is preaching right. I prayed about it. I preached what God told me to preach. For any bonehead moves even made, I had this message wrote. Hey man, right there. For they ever skipped town, I had that message wrote. God sat down in their lap. Just like God sat down in some laps tonight and you're so blinded, you think it's everybody else, not you, amen. amen. First, you got to be in the faith. That's exactly right. You got to get born again. You got to get washed in the blood. Amen. Can't be no half-hearted conversion. Hey, to fellowship with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Hey, moreover, brother, I declare unto you the gospel. Hey, that you heard and you believed. Alas, hey, here's the clause. There's a lot of people whispered a prayer and never gave their heart to the Lord. That's right. That's right. Amen. They went to impress Papa. They went to, they went to impress right. Nana. No. Say it again. They went to impress everybody else. That's right. That's right. Hey, some of you sitting in church and you want to be a Christian and you find it so hard to be a Christian. You know why? Because the Bible says the way of the transgressors. Amen. 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 That's what it says. 
But then after you've been saved and you get in the faith, I'm going to tell you why some of you being saved will cool. never have any power. Because after you get in the faith, you're supposed to be found faithful. That's right. Yeah. Like coming to church. Yeah. yeah. But when you come to church, you don't play Looney Tunes in your mind. Amen. Amen. I'll tell you why the sword don't divide and cut like it should. There's too many that are preoccupied. Amen. Pre-distracted. Yep. Pre-set. Come in with this type of attitude right here. I don't give a blessed fire what he says. I ain't listening. Amen. That's right. I ain't changing for him. Guess what? Nobody asked you to change for me. If you change for me, that's all you got. But if you are of God, you are to be conformed into the image of the one that saved you. First, got to be found in the faith. Got to be found faithful. I'll tell you what the Bible says in Proverbs 20, verse 6. My wife quoted it on the way here. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness. Right. But a faithful man, who can you find? Right. Amen. I'm good. Right. I'm all right. Come on. Yeah, I love what good. Shacking up, lying. Amen. Hey, Amen. stealing. Amen. Y'all all right? Amen. Hey Amen. That, that's in the context of salvation. But in the context of rocking right, there are the righteous and the unrighteous. Yeah. Amen. That's right. <laughs> See, if you're going to just fight yourself for the salvation, then there's none good, no, not one. Amen. They've all gone astray. But after that, you've been born again. Amen. There's those that walk right and those that walk wrong. You're either righteous or you're unrighteous. And it's all about how you're walking. Don't act like you're tired. I, I drove six hours straight here just to bless God preach my spleen out. Don't you act like you're tired. Hey, I'll tell you what will get you untired. It's get full of the Holy Ghost. And with power, you'll not be tired in church like that. Yeah, man. They got to be found faithful. Every man will justify himself That's right. to where he's at, but he won't ever look up and find God. But you know, 1 Corinthians 4, 2, Bible says, <coughs> Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. says. You know what the Bible says about a man that's unfaithful is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. That's what it says. They ain't nothing worse than not being able to count on somebody at all times. You can now look at me. You can hate me, but you know you can count on me. Amen. Man, we had every temptation in the world try to stay down there in North Carolina. <laughs> Well, David Hicks walked by and said, you know, you're preaching tomorrow night, right? You've been in an atmosphere with a bunch of preachers. God, help out to preach this down here. They've been throwing stuff through the window. It might have been a small child. <laughs> they wouldn't be looking at me golf kind right now like some of you have been staring Amen. at me since I got here. Amen. Hey, man! Cut a hold up. I don't know what, what, what plan God was, but I'll tell you this. I looked at y'all on Sunday. And I said, I won't have a feeling. I'll be here Amen. Sunday school. I'll be here Sunday morning. I'll be here Sunday night. I don't care if that van had to come in on fire. We's going to be in church tonight. Amen. You call me tomorrow, you know I'll get a hold of you. You know, if you ask me to pray, I'll pray for you. Amen. Why? Because God's been faithful and it is required of me and you uh, who are the servants. That's what a steward is. Uh, that a steward be found faithful. It's a requirement and you cannot be close to God if you ain't faithful. Amen. Amen. You can be counted on or you can be counted out. Amen. I heard this a long time ago. A man that's good excuses, he ain't good for nothing else. Amen. That's right. That's right. Excuse after excuse. Why, why, why? 
You just don't know my heart. Yeah, I do. That's right. It's deceitfully wicked above all things. <laughs> Amen. And I may not be able to read the intent of your heart, but God does. That's Amen. right. Amen. I said first you need to be in the faith. Second, you need to be faithful. Last one, you ready for this? Be committed to the finish. Amen. Press toward the mark. Amen. Amen. Lasha said, wherever you go. That's right. I'm going. You know why? Miss Jenny, well, I feel God on this. There's going to come a day Jeff Harmon ain't going to be here. Anymore. That's right. Amen. Amen. There's going to come a day. Oh, no, 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 no. Listen here now, Brother Hawkins. <laughs> Terry Hawkins ain't going to be here no more. Amen. And Steve Lindsay ain't going to be here no more. That's right. And I know they ain't that much older than me. But God help, I hope I, you know, we, we follow the pecking order of age. You know what I mean? There was a day that, that them men's not going to be around anymore to watch my walk. Amen. You understand, if Elisha didn't make his mind up before the chariot and the whirlwind, Sister Marion, he'd have quit the moment Elijah was gone. Yep, yeah, that's right. They, they, they asked him, don't you know? It's the point that a man wants to die after this judgment. There ain't nobody getting out of this world alive. Amen. Amen. That is exactly right. But when the man of God is not around, our commitment to finish what keeps us around. Amen. That's right. <clears throat> when Paul said this, for all men are forsaken. That's right. If he was most Baptist preachers today, yeah. right after he said that, he said, and in this I do disclose my acknowledgement of retirement and refraining from the ministry. Amen. There you go. I'm done. That's good. It gets real hard. I've been telling my kids for a long time. My girls get up, my girls sing, and they shout glory. Praise and God, but what if I told you? So there'll come a day I won't be here no more. Mm -hmm. If you don't have your mind committed before I check out of this place, you'll check out of the ministry straight behind me. Amen. Amen. If I've done anything to motivate this church, as there'll come a day. Well, there won't be the same man standing there. That's right. And when he ain't there no more, if we ain't made our mind up to be finished in the commitment of finishing, we won't make it. That's right. And let me just say this. As far as I know, I'm here until I die. Amen. I heard Brother John say that this morning. 29 years in the same place. He said, as far as I know, I'm there till I die. Amen. All right. But can I tell you, death is coming. Amen. Mm -hmm. But here's the problem. If you're just going to wait till that day, you'll never be committed. Amen. 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 You must be committed to finish while the race is yet being ran. That's right. Today. Amen. Amen. I wonder tonight if there's any in here to be honest and say, Brother Hargis, I'm out there. I'm one of them out there in the distant one right now. Is there anybody like that tonight? I just want to pray for you. I'm not going to call your name out. I'm not going to embarrass you. Is there any like that in here tonight? Be honest and say, that's me, Brother Hargis. I'm the one that's a far off right now. I'm not where I'm supposed to be at. How about this? We'll do, we'll do the old Baptist method for your heart. Close your eyes, bow your heads. Amen. Now, I ain't going to lie and tell you ain't nobody looking around because that's me stupid. I'm looking around. <laughs> but nobody else looking around. I wonder now, with every eye closed, every head bowed. I wonder how many now would raise their hand and say, Brother Hargis, that's me. I'm one of the far off. Would you pray for me? I'm not going to call you up by name. You see my hands go up. Please put your hand straight down since you raise it up. Just throw that hand up just for a second. All I'm going to do is pray for you. I see hands. 
I wonder how many of them would acknowledge tonight. Say the first and foremost problem is I wonder if there's anybody in here to say, Brother Harvest, I need to be saved. God has knocked on my heart and pierced my heart tonight. And I'm lost and undone. Is there anybody like you? Just raise up your hand. I'm not going to call you up. I'm not going to embarrass you. I just want to know how to pray for you. Is there anybody like you? Just say, Brother Harvest, I'm just, I'm just not saved. Is there any like that in here tonight? I wonder how many to be honest and say, Brother Harvest, I believe my problem is, is my faithfulness. I'm seeing hands go up everywhere. Oh, they're going up everywhere. Oh, God be the glory. I won't call you. I ain't going to embarrass you. I ain't going to pray for you. I wonder how many would say, Brother Harvest, my faithfulness is affected because I have no commitment to the finish yet. Hands going up everywhere. I'm seeing them. Whether you raised your hand or whether you didn't, but especially to all them that raised your hand, there's a lot of you. Why don't you come up this old-fashioned altar? Nobody's going to grab you. Nobody's going to embarrass you. Nobody's going to call you. But whether you raise your hand or not,